One day, uh, my father emerged from the bathroom carrying a National Geographic magazine. And I was extremely relieved that it wasn't the same National Geographic magazine I had been looking at in the bathroom. <laughs> he, he sat down beside me and he showed me the terraced rice paddies up the side of a mountain in Thailand and told me that that is what our backyard was going to look like. <laughs> so that summer I shoveled dirt, an unbelievable amount of dirt. But eventually it came time to put the first retaining wall in. And what's a good uh, material for retaining walls? Railroad ties, especially because they're free. So one day, my uncle and my father and my brother and I drove to Stacyville, Maine, to the railroad yard um, on a Sunday morning, and we backed up to the pile of used railroad ties, and then we discovered that they were right beside the pile of brand new railroad ties. <laughs> Those would probably last a little longer. So we began to load them onto the truck. My uncle and my father, that side of the family, were legendary for their strength. They easily threw a railroad tie on their shoulder and marched to the truck and threw it onto the truck. My brother and I spent the entire time moving one half of one end over end until it got close, and then my uncle grabbed it and threw it onto the truck. Uh, we eventually loaded the truck. We didn't want to go back, so we loaded as many railroad ties on the truck as it could possibly take. And as was the custom back then, kids rode in the back. So uh, my brother and I climbed on top of the railroad ties, and my uncle and my father jumped in the cab, and we started to drive away. And it didn't take long until they realized they couldn't steer. The front tires weren't touching the ground. So my uncle had a solution for that. He leaned out the window and he said, Davy, Doug, climb onto the hood. <laughs> so, so we climbed over the cab and onto the hood and out we put our feet on the bumper and we held on. And, and that was just enough to give the wheels a little traction so that we could start on our way. And it, we were going maybe six, seven miles an hour down the road. Now, in Stacyville, Maine, there's not even house numbers. There's no police. Uh, the state police don't go near that. The only person within 50 or 60 miles who we could be worried about at all was the county sheriff. And he was usually in church, but not that day because we passed him on the road. <laughs> and he stopped. He was going the opposite way, and he just stopped. And we kept on driving. And this went on for a long time. I mean, we weren't going very fast, but we just kept driving along and the sheriff was just stopped in the road. He was trying to figure out what was going on. Eventually, after what seemed like, you know, five or 10 minutes, but a, a long time, he turned around and he turned on his lights. And when he did that, my uncle leaned out the window and said, hang on, boys. We didn't actually go any faster, but we didn't stop either. And the sheriff was right behind us now. It didn't take him long to catch up, and the lights were on, and the siren was going, and we just kept right on driving. Eventually, the sheriff got tired of that, and he turned his lights off, and he turned the siren off, and he pulled up beside us. I mean, there's nobody on this road. And he leaned over, and he rolled down the passenger side window. And he yelled out, what are you guys doing? And my uncle said, we're trying to get away. <laughs> so, so we got to a dirt road. And then the sheriff, we stopped. And the sheriff came over. And my uncle explained that uh, we wanted to get to the dirt road. And we weren't hurting anybody. And we were going to take not run into any traffic on the way back. And we didn't want to go a couple trips and all that. And the sheriff understood that. And he, he was like, oh, OK. And he started to walk away. He didn't even notice the railroad ties were new. And then he turned around and he said, hey, what about those two boys on the hood? My uncle said, you know, monkeys are born and they hang on to their mother's fur and they swing through the trees. Those boys are fine. <laughs> and the sheriff scratched his head and he, 
He said, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and that's how we went home. Um, my uncle passed away a couple, just two years ago, and, uh, and we told stories about his life, and uh, he always had a way of finding the adventure in the most mundane of tasks. And uh, before he, he had uh, 50 feet of oxygen hose so he could continue to go swimming. <laughs> and, uh, and I have a lot of stories. And the reason I have so many stories is because when somebody suggests I go from the back of a truck to the hood, I always say yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>